Alrighty, so um, this video is at the request of a gentleman called Josh Wright, one of the viewers of our uh, channel, our page. Um, I posted about um, frogs, a green tree frog, and um, I said it was the first animal that I ever learned to mimic. And Josh wanted to know if I would be able to do a video on uh, mimicry of animal sounds. So that's what this video is. So I got a poster from National Geographic, or a, you know, in the house there was a poster from National Geographic when I was a child, about four years old, I think. And it had all of these frogs of Australia, and it had the sound that they make, the uh, sound wave frequency, and then letters that it would actually, if you were to pronounce it, now the green tree frog, I'm pretty sure it was a green tree frog. It's uh it let its letters were A A A A A A A R R R R R R R R R R K. So I looked at that as a kid and I went, ah Right? So that's how that evolved. When I did the sound for my mum, she was so impressed with it and it just sent me off on this world of making sounds, right, to impress my mum. Uh, my dad, he was always able to do this horse sound, right? Because he grew up sort of chasing the wild bush brumbies. And I don't know if I'm going to do it as well as he does, but... Um... <clears throat> sort of thing there. Now, um, I did grow up listening to opera as well so I learnt you know a lot of things like um sort of stuff you know listening to Pavarotti and the Italian influence in the family was a bit of a thing and growing up in the bush I was always able to be loud you know so um when you have one sibling who's you know a hundred meters away it's like sort of thing, right? You get the lesson of the Kui, which uh, means come play with us, apparently, in the Darug language. Now, um, so then you got things like beatboxing came about, and beatboxing was interesting, because people teach you how to say things like, you know, a box of cats, you know, like, a box of cats, 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 Right, so then I started to listen to the animals more, and try and put words to what they were saying. So when I heard the kookaburra, it wasn't like just, you know, a laughing sound. It was like a crack, 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 crack. Like crack, 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 crack. Like crack and cooking. Crack, 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 right? So. And as I travel the country, I hear different accents in the animals too. So there's all different kinds of kookaburras and they all make different sounds and they make different sounds depending on the season. So like a baby kookaburra, they'll make this sort of like a sort of sound going on. So that's, that's always fascinating. And like baby animals always make these really interesting sounds too. Like a baby, um, a lot of the sounds is usually something like feed me, feed me, right? Which is like for a magpie becomes right? Or something like mom, 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 right? Things like that. And I listen to the to the magpies in the morning, and they got that sort of like coodle doodle doodle thing, like. And so you hear that sort of like thing I'm doing. That's like what you call a trill. So like when you play piano, you do like real rapid and it's like like that. And that's like that. So the lady, um, Jacinta Tobin, Auntie Jacinta, she says, um, I got what you call liar bird dreaming. So that means I can make all the sounds of the forest. Okay. So, um, And when I do all these sounds, I'll actually attract lyrebirds to me, which is really cool. 
Um, so that's that's pretty awesome. Now then, of course, you, you grow up with things like chickens, and you go. Like, And like the kookaburra, when he moves, his, his whole, when he does his song, he like vibrates. So it's like, a sort of thing. Like he, but he has his waking up sound and he has his going to sleep sound. But that sound isn't made by one kookaburra. It's made by usually like a family of like three or, you know, five or even up to seven kookaburras. So it gets that real amphitheric fit, um, amphitheater feel. Then you got things like the bloody, oh, dude, I, I love um, rainbow lorikeets, but I, house sat for a lady who was taking care of one and unfortunately because he's been raised by hand he's kind of like sort of aggressive you know or at least he's he's confident and that confidence freaks me out now their sound is really high pitched like it's real um and they're all talking to each other going nuts you know like like this and then you get all the other parrots with their little And um, then you've got, obviously, the cockatoos. Cockatoos are funny because they're very vocal. So the white sulfur-crested cockatoo, he's like, uh -oh, uh -oh. and it's like, hello, hello, uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. and it's like, it's things like this. Now, there's this bird up north in Cairns called the catbird, but I call him the Jerry Yura bird, which is actually their word for hello, is Jerry Yura, right? Jerry Yura for the, um, I think it's uh, Google Yalanji, right? And, um, and this bird just goes, he goes, Jerry, you're out, Jerry, you're out, which is that he's just saying, hello, hello, you're out, you're out, you're And that's, you know, that's his word. You got the whip bird as well, and that's sort of just like this, it's actually the male and female talking, so it's like the male goes, and the female responds with, so it's like, right? Um, then you got, what else you got? Oh, the ravens, they're funny. They're funny. So ravens and, and crows are similar. So the crow, he's like, rah, 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 rah. and sometimes in the Aboriginal law uh, history in, in Eastern Australia, he's often call, called Wan, the crow, W-A-H-N, Wan, Wan. Sometimes people say it sounds like Mark, Mark. So all the different sounds, they correspond to different times of day as well. So you, you, you'll get different sounds depending on humidity and seasonality and things like this. Now winter is a real quiet time. It's a real, all the energy is going into the earth. You're eating root crops, you're eating carbs, you know, and everything goes a bit silent, you know. But summertime, springtime, you know, springtime is what they call the time of calling sound um, and shouting, you know. So shouting is a real interesting thing because it creates this like, imagine a sound wave and it's going Whoo, like this, like Whoo, like that. Right, and and you can sort of you can destroy things with sound as well. Like you can you can refine sound to a point where you can use it like a laser, and you can actually destroy a, like a cancer or a um, gallstone or a kidney stone. You can actually shatter it. Uh, you can also heat things up, sort of like microwave radiation. But it's just like it's a real sudden like just a note. And then if you've got acoustics and you're in a real like reverberating space, that note hits against other notes and it's like when a wave crashes against another wave and the waves build strength. So you get this real sort of like acoustic like vib vibration, vibrato I think it's called. Like so sound uh, mimicry I think is something that comes natural to people. So like if you grow up in a city you'll tend to like imitate more things like cars and stuff or like <laughs> jackhammering stuff or like <laughs> of like screen doors and, you know with all your ambulances and sirens and they're different around the world too. Like the German ones are really freaking loud, eh? They just come you can hear them for miles, it's ridiculous. It's like a constant it's off its head. I hate it so much. It's so terrible. I had to come down here to get away from the house because my lady was just going to be annoyed by like, these obnoxious sounds, right? Now, even crabs, they'll make a sound, but that's like a bubbling. It's like Because they'll actually blow bubbles. And it's sort of like a mating thing they do, like to attract a female. It's really interesting. And then you've got, um, you know, obviously things like the water droplet sound. And most people have to flick their cheek for that one, but I don't. I just make like a D sound at the same time. It's like... 
And it's like I'm saying, do it, do it, do it. Right? Um, yeah, I'm trying to... Oh, so you've got also the, the what they call um, certain types of black cockatoos. They call them garment. And that's to do with the sound. <clears throat> like a silent G and a silent T, but... So there's that there. Um, then you've got like things like uh, crickets and stuff like um And you'll find it's actually easier to do those sounds when it's cricket season. Not like as in you know the game, but as in the season when crickets come out. Um, and usually early in the morning too. But now it's kind of cicada season, so you get this real like shh, 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 sort of sound. Um, yeah, obviously you've got basic things, ducks, you know. Quack, 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 quack. And it's not like quack, quack. It's like a whack sound, like quack. Like or like nat or knack knack. Like nwack, nwack, sort of thing. Um the crow the raven. And like when the raven comes down and he's trying to do whatever he wants to do, right? If he eats the babies of a lot of different birds too. So he'll eat the Aussie minor babies, right? So the Aussie miners, when the crow comes down, he's like, ah, 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 and then the Aussie miners like, and they're basically saying, here, 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 he's over here, he's over here, 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 here. Call the boys, call the boys, oi, oi, he, 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 he. and they'll all start looking at him, he, he. and they'll start flying down into his space. Ah, he goes, you know, ah, get away from him, ah, what is this shit? Ah, fuck off, ah, you know, like this. Get out of here, you know, like that. So that's always interesting. Um, then you got the sound of the phasmids, so your stick insects and your leaf insects. Um, the male leaf insects, as they fly, they make this sort of like um, sound as they go past you, like. Yeah. So, so that's that's a bit of all that, you know, like. I hope that gives some idea of a, a bit of what's out there. And, um, you know, obviously you've got things like the um, curlew, which is just annoying. It sounds like a screaming baby, you know, like. <laughs> you know, like it's real, like, you know, almost like a woman being strangled is, is actually what the Aboriginal mythology is, uh, is that it's actually um, the sound of a woman being strangled or something. It's just, it's nuts. Uh, I think, she, or she was crying because she lost her baby, or so, just some crazy freaking like sound, eh? Um, and then you got things like the crocodiles, which, like it just like this old sort of like guttural thing, like as it bubbles up the water and sort of craziness going on there. But yeah, anyway, I'll leave it there. That's that seems like enough uh, stuff. I hope that's. I hope you liked that, and I hope Josh liked that. Uh, Josh Wright, you can all thank him for uh, that video there. So, anyway, have a lovely day.